All right. We're live. Hey, everybody, welcome. Uh, we have a huge audience registered for this today. There's already dang near 100 people. Watch three, two, one. There you go. There's 100. There's a lot of people registered. We are very excited. My name is Jeremy Taylor. I'm part of the team uh, here at Ojo. Excited to talk to you all about creating optionality for sellers using cash offers. Super hot topic right now. Um, all right, there, we're now at 200. We had like 1,650 people register for this webinar. Uh, might be a hot topic. So cool. As you guys, as you all are joining, open up that chat and tell us where in the country you're joining from. I love that people have like started beating me to this. So Tyson, thank you. Hellers and Whitefish, Lodi, Chicago. Vegas, there we go, look at that. Oh, I saw Tucson and Tucson. Uh, let's see, Dallas, Pennsylvania, Baltimore, San Antonio. Man, amazing. All right, well, hey, if y'all are just joining us, thanks so much, my name is Jeremiah Taylor. Welcome, go and chat, tell us where you're joining from. We've got some awesome stuff for you today with this, uh, this panel, as well as uh, just some good content for you on some cool stuff we're working on at Ojo around creating more seller opportunities, which I know we all want more in this city. We'll give everybody like one or two more minutes. Uh... Welcome, welcome, welcome. Looking like we're getting to critical mass-ish. Um, for those of you who just joined, my name is Jeremy Taylor. I'm part of the team here at Ojo. Thank you for joining us today for our cash offer sellers, creating optionality for sellers webinar. It's going to be good stuff. We've got a killer panel for you all. Uh, excited to share some of the info that we've got for you here today. Uh, we're going to give it one more minute till we join. So if you have not yet opened up the chat or the Q&A, and I'm shocked today. Like usually it's like 30 people go in the Q&A. It was one today. Only one person went in the Q&A. Everybody else has figured out how to use the chat. Uh, go in the chat. Tell us where you're joining us from. Tell us something good that's going on. Oh, Bruce is like, I got something good. I'm in Hawaii. That's great. Anna, hello. Adam Wilson, San Diego. Hey, hey. Awesome. All right, it's 103, we're over 300 people. Um, this is great. So my name is Jeremiah Taylor. I'm part of the team here at Ojo. I'm very excited to uh, kind of be your tour guide on this topic of creating optionality for sellers. To give you all a, um, uh, a run of show of what we're gonna do today is we've got probably 20 to 25 minutes of content around like, hey, what is optionality for sellers? Like, what? how are people using cash offers? What, like, what, is, what, is, what is Ojo even talking about? And then how are we going to generate more seller introductions? How will you know that you're getting a seller introduction that clicked on a cash offer CTA? How should you take the call? We'll give you some best practices. Now we're going to spend the back half of the hour um, we have a panel of three people that, that they use these guaranteed offers, these cash offers in their business every single day. Um, and they're going to give you the real deal. How does it work? What works? What doesn't? And then we're going to save time at the end for Q&A. So for a lot of you, this is going to be new. For a lot of you, you're going to be like, yeah, I got this. I know what's up. I'm just excited. When, when do I get the leads? Um, but before I dive in, Chris, anything you want to add? Yeah. Um, hey, everybody. Chris Heller. Just for context, on the uh, on the topic of of cash offers, keep this in your mind as as Jeremiah and our panel have this conversation. When people say they want a cash offer, <clears throat> that could mean a lot of different things. They might be curious what their house is worth. They might be looking to move now, and they li literally want a cash offer on their home um, because they don't want to list it or they can't list it or some other situation. They may not want to talk to an agent. They may not have no interest in listening with an agent. What we do know is that most of these people end up selling their homes and they end up listing their homes for sale um, after they look at all their options. So our panel is going to dig into this more. Jeremiah is going to take you through some important things. But just keep in mind that when someone clicks on a cash offer, what they typically aren't looking for is someone to tell them about 
how great they're going to be at listing their house or those other things. They, they, they want something, we need to provide it and then show them what their options are and help them choose the best one for them. So I'll stop talking so Jeremiah can go. And I hope I didn't uh, uh, take any of your thunder away. You did. That was the spoiler alert. Chris Teller just gave away the entire presentation. You can all sign on. No I'm kidding. Um, so, hey, here's what we're going to do is I'm going to take you through some stuff. Just keep in mind, we can't see you. You can see us. So if you have a question, pop up in the Q&A, pop up in the chat. These are way more fun when they're interactive. Um, and hang on, before I share that, let me make sure I'm sharing my audio. Thank you, Avery, for the reminder. Okay, cool. So this is what we're here to talk about, creating optionality for sellers. And so let's just start with this. Like, what is seller optionality? Um, like in the tech bro world, this is a very commonly used world, word. In the agent world, I don't know how much people know what this means. What it really means is that forever, I mean, as long as real estate agents have existed, this has been the strategy. When somebody says, I want to sell my house, you say, hey, I can put a sign on the ground, I can put it in the MLS, and then I can pray that some other agent comes along and sells it, right? And then the best agents would say, and I proactively prospect for, for buyers for your house every single day. For a long time, that's all you had to do to sell real estate. In the early, two, like late 2010s into the early 2020, we started to see these new companies come to market, okay? And these new companies, iBuyers, buy before you sell, sell before you list, and all these new things, you're hearing about them, your potential sellers are hearing about them. And what the best agents are doing is they figure, they're figuring out how can I be the conduit for all of these non-traditional options so that I'm not competing with these people, I am collaborating with them. And so here's the deal. Successful agents give sellers options. The modern agent strategy is when you're going into that listing appointment, it's like, hey, not only can I help you sell your house. I can help you fix it up and get top dollar. I can get you a cash offer. There's even new programs called Cash Offer Plus where we'll sell it and then we'll put it on the market and help you still get max market value. We can buy your next house before you sell the current one. You can even sell your house and stay in it and rent it back. And there's a number of technology powered, uh, what we would call prop tech companies that have entered this space um, that they are reaching out to the same consumers you are. Now, here's the key to understand. Like Chris said, the majority of sellers are still going to actually go the traditional listing route. I would say it's probably nine and 10. You're, you're going to hear from your panel in a minute of what their experience is, but the majority of sellers will still go this traditional listing route. What today is about is to help raise your awareness of what these different options are in the market so that when you receive an opportunity, whether it's from Ojo or whether it's from a client in your market, you're better educated and you, you at least know what you're talking about. Now, into the future, we are going to aspire to create somewhat of a marketplace for these so that you can go and say, hey, I'm an agent in Austin, Texas. Show me who's operating with buy before you sell, who's operating with cash offers in my market. And we want to help you get going at this. For today, you're going to need to leave this webinar and be resourceful. Um, you're going to need to be able to figure some stuff out. You're going to have to, you know, kind of be an explorer and go find some of this stuff. But these are some of the companies that exist in this space today. These are some of the strategies. So let's double tap on this. What most agents are doing, and you're going to hear for our panelists in a minute, is they're going into these appointments and they have typically one of three, maybe one of four options. And so it's Mr. and Mrs. Seller, like I work with a network of investors that can give you a cash offer on the spot of what you can sell your home for. There's also a number of companies that maybe if it's not a distressed property, but there's some reason you just need some cash now, that they will actually give you the cash now and still give you the opportunity to put the home on the market and get market value. They charge a service fee for that. If you're in a market that Open Door operates in, Open Door is now offer, offering this as a service where they will buy the house for cash, put it on the market, and help the seller get max value. That is that cash plus option, kind of the hottest option that we're seeing right now. Okay. 
The second option is, hey, I've got a network of stagers, designers, contractors, or maybe I work with Curbio, Thumbtack, or one of these providers that will come in, they'll fix your house up, they'll help us list it, and we can get max market value for it. Or the tried and true third option, which is, hey, let's put the house on the market, expose it to the widest number of people, and let the market drive the price. The key in your the, in what you're going to hear for a panelist is in the presentation of these options, right? What's going to happen most of the time with the investors, they're going to want a wholesale discount and a wholesale price. Even with Cash Offer Plus, there's a premium, 5 to 7% premium that they're going to charge on top of commissions and sales costs and everything else that, that the seller is going to look at that and they're going to say, geez, I think it just makes the most sense to have you sell my house and put it on the market. But the key is you don't want to be competing with all these people. You want to be collaborating with these people. Okay. So we'll hear more from our panel on exactly how to do that and how they do that in their business. But I want to take a step back and show you what are we doing at OGO and why are we leaning into this so heavily? And so what we're doing is we're connecting agents to potential sellers that we meet on Movoto.com that are looking to receive a cash offer on their property. Now, these people are going to come from a different, like from a spectrum of different situations. Like Chris said, some are curious, some have a real thing that they need it now. The most effective way to deliver value to these consumers is to provide them with options that align with their needs. So as a flow, and I'm ignoring the Q&A and chat for a second. So keep putting your questions in there. I'll get to them in a minute. We're going to meet the consumer on our search portal, Movoto.com. We will call them and we're verified that they're looking to sell prior to making the introduction. We're then going to introduce you to them via, via some will be live transfers, some will be non-live transfers. Um, and if they are interested in a cash offer, you will know from the lead screen when you win that lead, okay? Once you connect to the seller, that's your opportunity to set an appointment, see the property and review the options. The Ojo Concierge will still support you after the introduction is made, just like they do on everything else. So what you see here is these are kind of the different flows. We have cash drop reforms on all the properties on MLS, on, on MLS, on Movoto.com now. So whether the property is live on the MLS or they've claimed their home that they're telling us they own it, Somebody can request a cash offer for their property. They'll put in the address. And then we've created a number of landing pages across our digital properties around cash offers where people can fill that out to get an offer. Now, what I want to help you understand is people will generally fall into one of four buckets and we've given them really fun names so that they're easy to remember. So there's a curious Carol. That's somebody that's like, hey, you know, what, what, what would somebody pay for my house? Maybe they haven't found the next house. Maybe they're not highly motivated, but they want to talk to somebody. They want to find out what it's worth, what somebody would pay. These people will likely require some nurturing, okay? The second time, we're going to call that a fix-up Felix. I want you to think about distressed properties differently from distressed sellers. Fix-up Felix, this is a distressed property. This is a home that needs a lot of work. This is gonna probably be best served either through a partnership with Thumbtack, Curbio, like a fix and list, or through just working directly with an investor that does a lot of fix and flip. Next up is Hurry Up Harry. This is a sale ready property, but a distressed seller. So maybe they've already found their next house and they have a limited window of time to close. Maybe they're up against a foreclosure. Maybe they need cash for something else. This is somebody that the property is sale ready. It could go to the market, but the seller has something that is causing them to need cash now. Those are your great candidates for those cash plus uh, scenarios, okay? And then there's traditional Tracy. Traditional Tracy is your, your average seller that is going to look at all these different options. They're going to weigh them out. And they're going to realize, hey, yeah, it's not the most convenient. Yes, I have to show the house. Yes, it's going to take 30 to 90 days to close. But ultimately, I get the most money by putting it in the MLS. The majority of your consumers that you meet will end up being traditional Tracy's. But the key is you need to be able to help them understand the entire range of options and help them make a de the decision that is the right one for them. Okay? So... 
the way that these will flow is just like all our other leads flow. They will request a cash offer. They'll come in. We'll run them through lead evaluation. We will call them. Some will be live intros. Some will be text intros. And the concierge team will do that thing on the back end. Okay. Nothing's changing here. Now, when you get these and when you get one of these lead, lead, uh, lead offer notifications, you're going to see there's a big banner at the top that says cash offer. When you click through it, there's going to be a big thing that says cash offer. You'll see, like, we're trying to put it as many places as we can so that it's really hard to miss. And so know that these are going to look like this, okay? Now, if you're a Pro Plus team, and you're not all Pro Plus customers on here, if you're a Pro Plus team, we actually have a new set of tools rolling out that will come out, I think, in the next week where you will be able to say, hey, yes, my team wants cash offer leads and you're going to get first pick at them now, and route them to this specific person on my team. And then you'll have this slider that you can say, what percentage of your lead quota are you willing to take as cash offer leads? Do you want all of it, none of it, some of it? That doesn't mean you, if you put it to 100%, that doesn't mean you're going to get all cash offer seller leads for your lead quota. It means you can get up to 100% cash offer seller leads uh, up to the like the range of leads that we gave you. So this is a new control coming for our Pro Plus teams. Uh, it's coming here in just the next couple of weeks. I'm going to pause. Actually, let me do this. This is what I want you to hear is the flow. So this is a live call. This is an actual person. We've been testing this in two markets, Houston and San Antonio. Um, and this is a live call. So let me play this CR call. So this, 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 going back here, this is our first line at Ojo where we dial them and we get them on the phone before we connect to you. So let me play this so you all hear how it's going and then I'm going to go read the chat. Hi, oh, yes, this is Kwanzaa from Avoda on a recorded line. And the reason for the call today is you are on our website and fill out a form saying you were interested in the cash offer on your property. Does that ring a bell? Yes. Great. I can get you connected to someone right now to discuss a cash offer. I just need to verify I have the correct email for you. Have your email listed as Kishma Joseph at gmail.com. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Great. And by the way, are you also buying or planning on buying a home by chance? No. Got it. Okay. And is your house currently listed with an agent today? No, it's not. Okay. So all I need to do now is just send a text to get you connected to someone. Once they respond, I'll connect you over a three-way call. They're very quick, so it should only take a second. Do I have your okay to send them the text? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Perfect. Just one second. Okay, great. That text was just sent. And how would you like to be introduced? I see you entered your name as Kishma. Is that right? Yes. Okay, great. Now, Kishma... While we wait for them to answer, the person I will connect you with should be extremely responsive, very experienced, and will know the area well. They'll be able to come out to your house and walk you through all your options in selling your home. I think you're going to be really impressed with them. Nice. Okay. Yeah, and they should reply any second now. I'll mute myself real quick and let you know when they reply, okay? Okay. Yeah, so just hold the line. I'll be right back. All right, so we don't need to hold. Um, I'm gonna call a timeout there. I've been dumping a bunch of information on you and there's a ton of questions in the chat. So um, first question, if we don't, what, what if we don't actually have cash buyers or investors? There's a bunch of you that are like, yeah, this sounds really cool, but I don't know who these people are. This is where I'm gonna tell you, you need to be resourceful. Call your title rep, Call another agent in your office, call somebody and say, hey, who's the number one buyer of cash properties in my market? Um, who's the top flipper in my market? Get that introduction. I promise if you go sit down with a person that is flipping 100 homes a year in your market, you say, hey, I want to bring properties to you and have you make offers on them. You're going to be their new best friend. Uh, and they will likely give you a lot of those listings back on the back end. So you are going to need to be resourceful, which by the way, if you're not already doing that, you should be doing that. That's a good thing. Our panel will talk more about that. Um, can we reach out for an offer on our buyer's behalf before listing? Um, like these are, our goal is to help the people that we're introducing you to. 
a lot of these people are going to be buying another house and selling one and they're trying to deal with timing. And a lot of them are just trying to figure out what their options are. We are counting on you as the local pro to come up with the right solution. There's been some of these and Mark from my team is one of our panelists. We're like, I bought the house. Like personally, I bought it. We're happy to pay Oja the referral fee when I buy it because that's a great deal that I'm buying and it makes sense and it works for the, you know, for the consumer and it's the right option for them. Um, there's a couple questions on the vendors and the slides. We're going to send all that stuff out. Um, there's a couple questions on like, okay, cool. How do I get in the queue for this? The answer is these, if you're an Ojo Pro Plus team, so like you're one of the top teams in your local market, um, you know, you want an exclusive share of the leads, you should be signed up. There's a monthly platform fee, you get a reduction, a referral fee. You are going to get to choose, do you want these or do you not want these? If you are not a Pro Plus team, um, then it's it's going to just depend on your market, what we have, how many other teams we have in your market, et cetera. So if you're like an Ojo Pro agent or just an Ojo Select Network agent, you need to know about this because there's a chance you would get one of these. The only people that can actually like proactively today say, this is what I want are our Pro Plus teams, okay? There's a question around, will we be using the Movoto app? Um, Henry, I think you're talking about the old Novoto agent app. No, this will use the same Ojo referrals.ojo.me app that you use for everything else. There's a bunch of questions from you guys about like, hey, my brokerage is set up with XYZ cash buyer, iBuyer, what if I'm a cash buyer? Awesome. That's what we're looking for. We want you to be resourceful to help these sellers get what they need. Um, and, you know, let's say that you buy it or, or, or a, uh, you know, you do one of these cash offer deals. A lot of these partners, and the reason we're going to encourage you to go meet with them up front is they have built commissions into their process so that you can get paid. Then you would pay a referral fee on what you get paid. It's pretty straightforward. But for today, this is about raising awareness and helping you understand how to convert them. You can always reach out to us at support so that we can help you, um, so that we can help you get set up with the right people in your market and things like that. Um, so to be clear, these leads won't be available to any solo agents. No, that's not true. We send these to solo agents today. You just, as a solo agent right now, you can't select and say, I do or don't want these. You're just either going to get them or you're not. So you, there's nothing you can do on your end. Only our pro plus teams can actually request it. Um, open door 1% or less. That's right. Look, we are moving into a world as an industry, whereas if you are representing something, you need to be able to articulate the value you bring and you need to be able to negotiate for your money. Um, relying on Open Door or somebody else to pay you some fixed amount uh, is going to end up being the ceiling for your income. So you need to work with your broker, talk to them and learn how to negotiate and get paid your fee in addition to whatever somebody else is going to charge if you charge more than what is offered. Okay. Um, cool. Bunch of questions. I'm going to dive back into the prezo because I, I, in the next five minutes, I want to move on and get to uh, get to to our panel. So now this one is interesting. I told you we've been testing this in two markets. We have literally sent hundreds of these transfers out to agents. We have, could not find a single good example to play for you. Literally, not even one. Um, they were all like mediocre at best. And here's what we found most of these people to do. Most agents do this. They get on the phone. So the seller wants a cash offer. The CER says, hey, this person's looking for a cash offer for the home. The agent jumps on the call and they go, hi, I'm a local real estate agent and I'm going to help you get top dollar for your home. And the person's like, I don't want a real estate agent. I want a cash offer. And it, they like immediately alienate themselves and they put themselves on their back foot and they, they then become subject to all these objections around like, well, I don't want an agent. I wanted a cash offer. Why, why am I getting an agent? That's why we're teaching you so that you can understand the right way to approach this. So what I'm going to play for you is a role play. This is not a live call. It's an example and a role play. Now, we will be listening to these calls. We will find good examples, and we'll play those for you in the future. But for today, here's a role play. Hey, sir, it's Jeremiah yeah, Taylor here in Austin. I uh, understand you are looking oh, at yeah. selling your property and looking for some options. 
All right, nobody's giving me a thumbs up, so I'm going to assume you can't hear it and make sure I'm sharing my audio. Yeah, we can. I can hear it, Jeremiah. Oh, you can hear it. Okay. Yeah. Got it. All right. Yes, I Sorry. am. I am going to be selling my home, and I am wondering what you'd be willing to pay for it. Ah, that's great. We'd love to help you with that. Um, we buy houses all the time. When is a good time that I could come over, take a look at the property, and give you a number that I think we could we could get to you for you? Well, first, help me understand what are you? Are you an investor? What's your role here? Oh, that's a great question. So I am an investor. I'm also a licensed real estate agent, which it actually works in your favor because I'm held to a little bit higher standard than the average investor. Uh, and moreover, I have a network of investors that I work with as well. So the way that it works, Sarah, is I'll come over, I will take a look at your property, and then I'm going to give you a handful of options. One of those options will be what I would buy your house for and what I think another investor might be willing to buy your house for. Um, there'll be another option that says, hey, if you put your home on the market, this is what I think you could get for it, net of fees and everything. And then my job is to help you get what you want, help you get the most money for your home. Okay. I wasn't necessarily planning on working with an, a real estate agent because it's expensive and a lot of work. Um, so I'm not sure. Yeah, to total, totally understand. So you weren't planning on working with a real estate agent because you know they charge a commission or there's fees and the, those fees tend to be quite a bit of money. Yeah. Got it. Well, let me ask you this. If if you had two offers, let's say you had an offer from an investor that net you, you know, let's use a round number, $100,000. And then you had an offer from somebody else and there was a real estate agent involved and that offer netted you more money, even if it included paying the agent. Um, would you want the one that pays you more money or would you want the one where you actually net less, but you just don't have to pay the agent? I want as much money as I can make. Yeah, and I, and I think that's the answer that most people have. There are some people that just don't want to pay an agent, which that's fine if they don't. If you're really looking for the most money, that's something we can do. Um, when I come over, we can just go over the different options. And at the end of the day, if I can't get you more money, then I haven't earned the right to represent you, right? I like that mindset. Yeah. Well, hey, look, we're on the same side. Um, my job is to is to be the source of the options for you. You know, the tough part with working with investors is a lot of people go down this road and then they look back and they always wonder how much money did I leave on the table by not exposing the home to the widest audience. Mm -hmm. The best part of working with me is that you can have your cake and eat it too. I can show you what the easy button looks like. The majority of people end up putting the home on the market, but ultimately my job is to give you the options and let you decide. Great. So, Sounds good. Um, yeah, I would love to swing by. Actually, I'll be in your area. All right. So long-winded, less than perfect. Many of you are going to do it way better than me. Um, and it's going to give you an idea of how to approach it, right? Just start with, when can I come over and see the house? If they ask questions about, are you an agent? Are you an investor? What's going on? I gave you a way to handle it. Um, all the kit... Uh, but the person that said, can you finish the call? It's not a live call. It's just a role play. But yeah, here I can. Oops. Oops. I can't finish it. Hey, sir, it's Jeremy. Oh, we don't want to do that again. Maybe the tomorrow time. I'll be better. Market. But ultimately, my job is to give you the options and let you decide. Great. So, Sounds good. Um, yeah, I would love to swing by. Actually, I'll be in your area this afternoon around 3 or would tomorrow be better? Today works. Today works, great. I will see you today at three uh, to confirm the address is blah, 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 blah. See you then. I'll find that out to whoever wanted to hear that. Um, this example, right? We're gonna get better at this the more that we hear about this. And I think, uh, Chris, unless you have something else you wanna add, this is like a perfect spot to bring our panel on. No, let's do it. Let's bring them on. Cool. All right, we have three folks here. I'll just quickly introduce you to them. So you have, um, actually, you know what, let's not do that. Let's spotlight our panelists and I'll let them quickly introduce themselves. Uh, Ryan, I see you. Steve, I see you. Mark, I see you. Ryan, you're not muted, so I'll call on you first. Just quickly tell us like where you at, uh, how big's your team, 
And then a quick on how are you using this kind of a cash offer strategy in your business? Yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for allowing me to take part. Love working with Ojo. Uh, my name's Ryan O'Neill. I'm the uh, broker and founder of a team called the Minnesota Real Estate Team. Obviously, in Minnesota, uh, we're a little bit of a larger group. Work really all over the Twin Cities and uh, Minnesota and Western Wisconsin. And really, since the start of when I got into the business back in 2003 we have had a guaranteed offer or cash offer. So excited for today's discussion. I think it's really relevant for um, for uh, everybody attending. Um, Steve, why don't you go next? Yeah, thanks, Jeremiah. Um, hi, everybody. Um, I'm Steve Nickerson. I'm team lead of One Home Colorado, uh, Metro Denver. Uh, we've been using the cash offer program as a lead magnet for the last several years, and it's been um, really advantageous to us both for getting listings and also finding investor opportunities for our team members and also our, our clients. Um, we use a strategy where it's all like Chris said in the beginning and Jeremiah said it too. It's just about really having a conversation about options with potential sellers and what they're looking to do. Awesome. Uh, all right, Mark. Uh, Mark Camby, obviously I'm with the Jeremiah Taylor team in Tucson. <clears throat> Excuse me, we've um, we've had, kind of had this in our back pocket for a few years, but I think with the market shift, we've really started to use a lot more in the last probably 18 months. Um, kind of like what Steve said, it's it's really an opportunity for the team members as well as our investors to be able to to help people. Um, my big thing is transparency, making sure that I'm that people know that I'm local and I'm very transparent that I'm a real estate agent and um, the local piece is really a big piece in Tucson. Tucson's a very tight tech community and knowing that we're local, we're not open door, we're not Zillow, we're not, you know, all these national companies that people despise so much, that really makes a big difference and getting that connection with, with the people helps. Cool. I love that. And, and I think you all nailed it, right? This isn't a new idea. For Since I started in real estate, I remember hearing ads of, I'll sell your house in 30 days, and if I don't, I'll buy it, right? This is All this is is a new spin um, in, in kind of a transparent way of doing that where we tell where upfront the consumer can see multiple options from these different parties. Um, given today's inventory-constrained world, having more options is always better. And so I think that the, the thing, let's put ourselves in the mindset of somebody that, like, you all are very advanced at this. All three of you buy homes yourself, have a network of investors that you're working with. And like, this is pretty well thought out. If you were a newer agent or to this, like trying to get started, what, what's the first thing you would do? How would you get started so that you could feel confident to go do this? I go first. Um, so for me, I think it's two things. I think one, you have to really have mastery of the content in the conversation that you're going to have with the seller uh, to be able to, to really speak to those options that, that they could have. And then the second part is to have uh, really a backup uh, plan with investors, uh, whether it be a hard money lender situation or a established high line of credit or a HELOC where you can do things yourself or a investor network that wants those types of opportunities. I think it's really important to have those two pieces, two sides of the same coin, because there's a lot of different ways this can go for a seller. And ultimately it's about them and what serves them and what's best for them. And so you want to be as a consultant, come present the best possible scenario. And for us, we're looking at three things. It's like, do they want the best price? They want the fastest time or they want the biggest convenience in this situation. And a lot of these cash offers are really dialing into because they want to sell fast and they want to, um, you know, not have the, the the challenge of putting their house in the market or fix it up. And so if that's a conversation, then it's a cash offer. It's really, you know, easy to, to get into and give them an offer. But the flip side of that is maybe somebody wants best price and uh, fast timing. So then you got to factor in what are they willing to do and who who do you have in your network to, to bring that solution to that person? Yeah, I think just to piggyback on, on that point, I think we are, as we know, as agents and brokers, problem solvers. We are there to help, to provide solutions, to um, look at different alternatives. So I think the, the really positive thing with this program, as I listened to you describe it, Jeremiah, is more than anything, this gives the agent 
an opportunity for a discussion. And it may lead to an immediate listing. It may lead to a listing six months from now. It may lead to six referrals from that person, from you taking time to genuinely listen to their needs, help them offer solutions. And um, and again, knowing a lot of really good agents with all the brokers across the country, the, the cash offer or the guaranteed offer model has really, again, been around as long as I've been in business. And it is a huge lead magnet. It is, um, it gets people to, to call. And again, trying to get in front of them, trying to meet them in person is what we've found is really the key to conversion. Not saying, they don't care about us or who we are or our stats or whatever. They All they want to know is how are we going to help them so again, trying to get in front of them is something that we really focus on in that initial call. Uh, that's great. Mark, anything you, you would add about getting started? Yeah, it's, you know, I feel like it's, a, it's Ryan had a great point about getting in front of them. That, that's the thing is that I feel like we're successful much more if we can just get our foot in the door and sit down and see how we can help. And that's one of my tags is always like, I'm here to help. What, what can I do to help? And that's what they need. They need help because they don't know where to start. They don't know where to finish. I mean, you can't finish till you start. But um, going back to like when you first start this, yeah, you need some investors. You need some vendors. You need, you need to get your ducks in a row before you start this because you don't want to get in front of someone and go, well, I have an offer for you tomorrow and then never call them back because there's come, someone coming right behind you with an offer um, or they may have already got an offer that they, they didn't like. Um, but I, I just feel like it's sitting down with them and, and talking to them and saying, how can I help? That's that's. 80% of the battle. Not, and I'm not to go too much on the local, but it's just the fact that they're, you know, especially if it's a distressed seller, that, that's when they're really, they don't know what to do. And, you know, just distressed properties, I feel like are easier than distressed sellers sometimes. <laughs> so the sellers are the ones that are like panicking and they don't know who to call. And I feel like we need to be the source of the source and help them. And maybe it works out. And like Ryan says, maybe you get a listing six months from now, maybe you get six referrals, maybe you know, you see them at the grocery store and they tell everyone about you, then you've done your job. Yeah, that's great. Now, I, I know in listening to a lot of these, one of the key objections that the agent gets on that first call, or and, and even if they don't know it's an agent, this is, I just want to know what your cash offer is. Like, just tell me what you're going to pay for my house. Um, Steve, you're nodding the most to that. Do you, I mean, have you heard that objection in and when somebody says that, how do you help? How do you help them? Well, my response is always, I don't know. I haven't seen the house yet. When's a good time for me to come over and see the property? Um, because I really need to get eyes on it to make an offer. And we, we, you know, the range is wide. So let's get that range dialed in based on me seeing the property. The other thing I was going to, I was going to add, Jeremiah, I think speaking always in terms of the client to Steve's point you know, in order to be good to you and, and to give you the best information, Mr. or Mrs. Home Seller, I really do need to physically see the property uh, in order to do that. Does that does that kind of make sense? You know, kind of speaking in terms of them, then it's not so much I'm just trying to get in front of them, but genuinely to provide a good service, you, you need to see it. Yep. Yep. Makes total sense. Um, and that's no different. Then, that's no different than your your typical traditional seller. I mean, when you call a seller that wants to list, what's it worth? Well, I have to come take a look at it and make sure that we're on the same page and we're, we're you know getting the full potential out of it. So it's not a whole lot different than those those types of leads. Yeah. The other thing I, I like to add in there is I do want to bring some value to that appointment as well. So we'll, we we're offering now what we'd call a home improvement assessment. So. You know, if that's warranted in that conversation, we will use that. Like while I'm there, I'll do a, a complimentary home improvement assessment, see if there's some things that we can do to really maximize value early in this process for you to net you more money. Works more on a listing appointment, but in these types of calls, if it's warranted, we'll use that too. I love that. How, how do you all think about like what the right path for these folks is? Because like I think all three of you are in markets that have homeward, open door, offer pad numerous other like programs and then you have a network of investors um do you, like how do you all process that do you like go and get them an offer from all of these different things and show them a bunch of options or how do you how do you guide them through that do you, you want to go 
Sure. Um, we do a two step. So like the first time is a discovery kind of meeting where we're going to find out, you know, what's their motivation? What are they, is time the issue? Is money the issue? What's the issue? And then we're going to broad stroke some options and then come back. And if a cash offer is warranted, then we'll come back with the number in mind. Uh, if it's something that, you know, we can acquire and they want us to acquire it, um, fast, then we'll try to err on that. We'll take that project down. We'll acquire that property. Um, but if they're looking for more money, more money is an option, then we'll fish it out to um, our other investors and get more numbers on the property. And then we also have a online hook to a, a website that um, if they're not really ready to have the conversation, we have an, through Zoodelio we use, uh, we have guaranteedbestoffer.com. And so they can use that. And uh, that kind of does some of the heavy lifting up front for us and then we can drill it down once they're more serious yeah uh, i love that uh and just, just like right for those of you that didn't hear that because there's a question in the chat or in the q a would like to hear a scenario where the seller needs equity while putting the home on the market zudelio is a company that offers that so i will type what that is in the uh um in the chat there. So if you want to check it out, you can check it out. Ryan, what were we going to say? Yeah, I just think maybe for for some of you, any of you that have been kind of longtime agents, you know, I can think of some agents on our team who are very, it's somewhat sometimes the moral dilemma that they say, look, Ryan, it is genuinely in the best interest of the vet, you know, consumer to MLS list the property to let all of our friends and all the brokers see it and to get that highest dollar amount. And I think I think part of it is in those conversations I've had with team members is that, um, you know, remembering that we are kind of the beacon of information to them to help them understand how they want to take that information and process it and make the decision isn't my decision, isn't our agent's decision. And so I think, I think just realizing that again, kind of coming back to it, that this principle in general is just getting people to raise their hand that have some re remote interest in something related to selling their property. And so I, I think just as agents, you know, what we found being open to it and being open to those conversations is really helpful because it allows you again, more opportunities to meet people in person and genuinely help people. Yeah. Yeah. Spot on. Uh, all right. There's a couple of good questions in here. One is like, how do you guys handle the details about with a cash offer when you meet with them? You know, when you go in, you don't always have everything in front of you. Uh, and then there's another question that's, you know, once we connect with them, what do we do there? What I will tell you is like, Mark will find these and he'll send me a note about the house and I'll tell him basically sight unseen. If it's in good condition, I'll pay this. If it's in bad condition, I'll pay that. And Mark, I know you go into the appointment with kind of an idea do you want to, do you or anyone else want to talk about like, how do you handle that conversation without knowing the exacts going into the, into the meeting? It's, yeah, it is some, sometimes tough because the stuff you see on the internet or the research that you do, you can go to the house and it's been totally redone or it was totally redone and now it's a total disaster. So like Steve said, there's a range there, but a lot of times you, you have to kind of, you know, take a, a leap of faith and figure out, okay, like you said, Jeremiah, it's, it's worth this much in good shape or this much in bad shape. And then you kind of meet in the middle once you get there and figure it out. But I think if you do enough of them, you start to realize once you get there, you're like, oh, okay, well, the floor is not as nice as I thought it was. It needs new countertops. That's 1200 bucks, 15, 2000, whatever that number is. So I, I think you, you kind of have to, based on experience, you're, you're going you're gonna to be able to, to give them an offer, as you said, across from the table. And then, do your due diligence and all that stuff. But I think you do enough of them, you're going to realize that I'm going to have to go in there with at least some kind of number in my head to, to, to figure out what it, the real number is. Because it's, And it, it seems like more often than not, the consumer has a number in their head. Sure. And a lot of this is about how well do these expectations match. Yeah. And if you're even close, because a lot of times you're not, because you're like, okay, I'm at 280 and he's at 460. <laughs> you're like, there's such a gap there that it, 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 you can't fix that gap unless you put it on the market or fix it up and put it on the market, things like that. So I, I yeah, it, it, sometimes it's really about the consumer's expectations. Yeah. All right. So I want to clear, I want to answer two questions. And then I want to ask you all specifically, like, how do you make the transition from 
yeah, you asked for a cash offer, but really the right thing to do is to put it on the market and, the, and here's why. So I want to answer that in a second. But the questions are like, can I assign these contracts and get them like wholesale the property? How does Ojo get paid? All those things. At the end of the day, I have no idea what state you're in and how legal or illegal that is. You need to check with your broker and your attorneys and figure out the deal on assignments. How Ojo gets paid is if you get paid, we get paid. And that means whether you buy the house or you take a referral fee or an assignment fee or whatever, we are going to calculate what you pay Ojo on the greater of, you know, your success fee times two and a half percent commission times the price or what you actually made times the success fee. Pretty straightforward. If you have questions, you can always email support. Um, but but I want to I want to take it that back to the panel here. There's a really good question, which is most cash offers are really low. Um, and so how do you like realign expectations and pivot from this like, yeah, you ask for a cash offer, you want this, the cash offer is that, that's why you should list with me to get this. Who wants to take that? I think part, I think part of, part of that. Um, Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I, I was just to say, I think, <laughs> I think, um, you know, one thing we always like to ask the seller again is kind of coming back and saying, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, what, you know, after seeing this information, um, you know, talking about the home sale process, what is most important to you? And then listening and seeing what they say and they come back with. And if they come back with a uh, price often, which is the case, then it's having that discussion and saying, well, you know, again, we went through, you know, the cash offers from these investors here. Um, let's also explore here is another option of a traditional type of listing going through the benefits of that, how that works, buyer demand, market, who sees it. And just again, presenting those options. So it's more like leading them down the path, Jeremiah, instead of telling them, you know, it's more of a conversation with them to say, hey, if that is what's most important to you, you know, what you just said, let's 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 talk through this. And that's the way I guess we just try to kind of walk them through it side by side instead of telling them, if you will. Love that. Yeah, I would like to phone. Go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say real quick, um, I add to it, when I walk through the door, I let people know that I'm there, even though I'm not their agent yet, I'm still acting as if I'm their agent, so anything they tell me is confidential. I want to get to trust really, really fast and let them know that I'm looking out for whatever the best scenario is for them. So I get really excited about the investment side because I love those opportunities. They're fun for us. But if, this, if, if the opportunity is there to, to net them more money with a traditional sale or a fix, we call it flip your own house. I've done this for a couple of clients where they said, well, I really want more money. And I and the house was distressed and I'm looking at a number. And then I, we talked about, well, an investor is going to buy it. They're going to fix up and make all this money. I said to a client one time and it just kind of stuck. I said, well, then flip, flip your own darn house. And, uh, and then, so we helped him like flip, flip his own house. And it's now become kind of a, a third option for us is that how we present it. And so we're always looking to do what's best for them. And so if they're, you know, that cash offer doesn't fit to answer your original question, it's always what's in their best interest. What's going to net them the most money in the least amount of time with the less amount, least amount of hassle. But of those three things, what's most important, what's second, what's the third that was the least, and then make those kind of those recommendations based on those three things. Love that. Um, and it looks like like Tony Morrow in the chat had an example of what they lay out. Um, for, for, now, pretend for a minute that you had to get, it was a house you didn't want to buy. It wasn't in one of the iBuyers buy box. And you had to go to your investor network to get them an offer. How quickly are you trying to turn that around? And like generally, how quickly are your investors prepared to close? I think... I think getting a response back to the consumer with a uh, within a day or two um, is totally doable. And uh, again, wherever you're watching this, I I know I've seen some from Hawaii and other spots. There are those ga uh, gals and guys that are really active investors that are buying, and so it's it is just building those relationships with those people, mm -hmm. making some calls to some of the top agents in your market who do a ton of business. They probably already know them. And, and they're out there. Those folks are out there. And, and so I think, again, within a couple days, um, 
of of uh, initially Jeremiah, and then closing, you know, closing within a week, week to ten days, working with a title company that's able to how how quickly can they get it done, you know, um, obviously that's fast, but it depends upon your title company too. You want to have a different answer? Pretty much the same thing. I mean, I have investors on my you know my text thread that. I'll, I'll text them either when I'm in the driveway or before I leave the place, sending pictures. I can get an answer within hours. But you got to get yeah. back to them, I, I, would, I would say, within 24 hours because if you don't, someone's coming behind you and doing something different, whether that's a listing or they're buying it themselves. But, yeah, usually 24 hours, sometimes less than that, depending on the property, how good it is and what the, what the value is. But, yeah, they'll, they'll go elsewhere if you, if you wait too long. Yeah, yeah, and we've got a really robust net investor network here in Denver. Uh, I recently had one that I was under contract on. We were going to flip, did the um, inspection, and it was just a little more than I wanted to deal with. I like, I like to say I like putting makeup on houses, like and and jewelry, fi fixtures, and paint, and you know, like easy flips for me. Um, this one needed a lot. There was some foundational stuff and some black mold and stuff going on in the attic. Um, so I flipped it to my investor network. I found somebody that right in their wheelhouse and then I took a commission on it, sold it to them and the seller was happy. They only took $5,000 less than they were going to sell it to me for. And they were super happy because we closed in two weeks. So That's right. creative. Just you, creative. Chris, you got something? Yeah, I was just going to ask. You guys have given some great examples of how this works. And I know my team has been doing this since um, January, 2019 marketing cash offers. Um, I think the critical thing for, for most of the people watching and listening is just that initial conversation. Because if you can get, can get by the initial conversation, then being able to come and present the two or three or four options that you're going to present them with is just sort of a, you know the next natural part of the process. What have you guys learned and in, in seen from your agents, you know, the, the, the do's and the don'ts on that initial conversation? I would just just to just to say, um, remember, it's not about us. They don't care if you're the top agent or top team in your market or if you've sold a billion houses or whatever. Just remember, it's always about the consumer. It's about the the, the seller. So I think it's natural. You want to try to prove yourself to get in front of them. But remember, that's one thing we found is that, you know, just just keeping it focused on them uh, specifically. Yeah, so we, I, I preach a lot. We have to care about what they care about. And so, and it comes off, it comes across on the phone if you don't care, right? So if you're just there and you start talking about how great you are, you're going to lose the call. Just like that example Jeremiah was saying earlier. Um, our goal is to really just come at it with great value, give them things that they haven't maybe thought about before. So that, that opens the door for us to get an appointment, to get our foot in the door. And to Mark's point, that's when we're more face-to-face that's where the magic happens. That's where, you know, we build trust and credibility and we're able to offer solutions and then we win that business, whatever's best for them. Yeah. Love it. How, how much do you all find that the people looking for cash offers are going to multiple sites and submitting like to get multiple bids from multiple places? Quite a bit. Quite often. Yeah. They're, they've already got their open door bid in half the time already in yeah. hand. Yeah. In, in the, the open door and others have pretty narrow buy boxes, meaning they're looking for like homes built prior or after X date under Y price in X square footage. And a lot of these people, the reason they're playing like cash offer ping pong is because they can't get the offer they want from the, the first place they went. Mm -hmm. um, and so when, when somebody does have multiple like investors and they're waiting to hear back, how do you all you know, help them understand that it's a good idea to work with you versus go do this on their own. I think resource, Jeremiah, again, if you have options for people, you have multiple investors, maybe your team, your brokerage partners with a variety of the services that have been described that, that, that gets these cash offers out quickly to people. I think just letting people know you have the resource for them so they don't have to go to 15 different people to uh to to get the same information essentially and it's the level of trust and <clears throat> excuse me making sure i mean their comfort level a lot of these people are in distressed situations where they're not sure who to trust and not sure you know who to listen to and i think if you build that rapport with them 
I'm sure it's just like a, a regular listing. Sometimes they'll choose you over a different listing agent, even though you may have the same background or whatever the case may be, stats and all that. But it's a really a level of trust and making sure that they, they're going to get what they need. Yeah. Yeah, you know, we have a number of creative selling solutions. And like a lot of the people that we talk to, they want the price. They want that big net number and the cash offer isn't going to give it to them. So if they're willing to be a little patient in the process and take on a little bit of the stress or some investment, or at least allow us to come in and bring a, bring our people in. And we have a design coordinator on our team and all these value, additional value things that we bring to the process um, we can get them, get them more money. So if I'm competing against a lot of multiple situations like that, I'm going to talk net and what's and really kind of, if it was, if we could get you an extra 10, $15,000 and it only took an extra 30 days, would that be a value to you? And let's, then let's talk about it versus just here's my cash offer and let me know how it goes. One last thing real, real quick, Jeremiah, I was just going to say that in these conversations as well, uh, uh, a good value add you can offer to that seller if you're not coming to that number, like Jeremiah said, they had a number in mind, is offer to show them two or three or four or five other active homes that are on the market. Um, again, taking a little extra time with them, no strings attached, just to show them some of the additional properties, see where they're priced, see the market time, that can also help you get closer to that number um, that you're telling them. Yeah, that's great. Uh, there's, a, there's a good question in the Q&A, and I think we're going to see more of this. So there's a seller. They're three months behind on their mortgage. Uh, the cash offer or even listing the home on the market isn't going to get them enough to pay off the mortgage. They bought at the high, they were the highest sale in the neighborhood last year. What do you do? We're advising people in those situations to, if they have to move and leave the area or they're in a financial situation, what can we rent it for? Uh, let's let's put a tenant in there for a year or two and, and let the market catch up to what you paid for. We just had a group coaching this morning. We were talking about that same thing. We have a lot of those frenzy buyers that paid, you know, 10 to 50,000, hundred thousand dollars over list price. And it's not a good situation if they have to sell right now with the correction going on. So back in the, you know, for those of us that have been selling for a while, I, the short sale market, I mean, I, I can remember in the Twin Cities, all we had are short sales and it took six, eight months, nine months to close a deal. So, uh, so there's going to be those situations. And just again, understanding that process, partnering with a good local law firm who can help you negotiate that short sale is really important. It's just another tool. It's just being a resource, helping that seller, helping them through it. Love it. For those of you that don't know what a short sale is because you are less than 10 year, real estate years old, um, it means that you are going to negotiate uh, or an attorney is going to negotiate or the seller is going to negotiate with the seller's lender to accept less than the amount owed uh, in exchange for selling the property today. Um, that, that From like 2008 to 2011, I don't think we did much up. Um, so what's we, and, one of my favorite from, uh, quotes? And from 1990 to 97, did hundreds of them, <laughs> right? Like, one of the best quotes is, There are no good and bad markets, there are simply the right and wrong tactics for the current market. And right. knowing that the right tactics for the market you're in is key. So, we're at two minutes. Um, I would love for each one of you to give us like a parting thought, you know, what, what is, what's the next action step that an agent should take if they're listening to this today? Mark, we should let you go first. <laughs> That's fine. Um, <laughs> I, I would say get your ducks in a row, make sure you have your vendors and your investors and you have a, <clears throat> a plan in place. So when you do get in front of these cash buyers and they actually <laughs> want to accept your offer, then you, you have the resources to be able to do that. Um, that and I mean, I know it sounds crazy, but a lot of these people you have to follow up with and follow up with and follow up with and follow up with and then follow up with them two more times because sometimes no action is their action because they don't know what to do. So they do nothing. So, I, you know, I, I would say make sure that you're staying in front of them, no matter how how hard that is sometimes, because, you know, sometimes you have to contact them 15 times to be able to get a hold of them. And, but then that 16th time, they they want you to come over. So keep that in mind as well. Yeah. Cool. Who wants to go next? 
Ryan, you go next. All yeah. right. Yeah, I, I think um, just, again, build your network, local investors, your vendors list, your trusted professional in every aspect of a house. Have that easy access, easily accessible for people. It's very important to provide value in that way. And I think then just as agents, brokers, um, be um, um, positive and, and happy about the opportunity. Remember, each one, in my opinion, each one of these leads presents a wonderful opportunity for a discussion for something. And so I think, um, again, I know a lot of agents around the country that that convert a ton of these into deals into transactions, into commissions. And so I think it's a great opportunity and um, I'm excited Ojo's doing it. Love it. Steve. For me, I think you need to approach it as strategist first, activist second, meaning that you have to come in and really know the options really, really well so that you can present them in a way that's gonna bring value to that person and give them most importantly, a solution that works for them. And then secondly, you're an activist and then you have to go make it happen. So whether that's, you know, having your investor network lined up or a, a giant line of credit that you can take advantage of these opportunities if somebody's in a cash situation or have your vendors lined up, are they willing to get paid at closing? Some of these things to kind of think about. I don't go with the third party models. I have my own vendors because um, I think they charge too much and the work is not always the best. So we have a philosophy a little above middle when we were fixing up a house. And so I want to make sure we get our, vet, our right vendors in there. So then we put it on the market, we really get max dollar if that's the direction they're going and maybe they're tight on cash. So I have funded clients before to get them through to closing. I have, have them tap HELOCs, whatever it takes So just know all those things, all those options before you can uh, really do it. And I'm um, happy to talk more about it if anybody wants to reach out. Cool. Um, hey, for those of you that are on the panel, drop like your Instagram or, or your email or however you would want somebody to get a hold of you. Drop it in the chat. I have one thing I'm going to share that the team's going to kill me for sharing and I get excited to do that. And then Heller's going to close this out. But like in the spirit of contribution, we know that this is hard to be able to explain. Our team is hard at work on putting together some, some pages for you to use in your listing presentations that you can explain to a seller, what are these different options? How are you trading price against time? And give you some basic pros and cons of these different strategies. So read your email from us because we're gonna be sending that out to you. We are looking to help you use the strategy that is gonna cause you to be the most effective, not just in the market that we're in, but in the market we're coming into. Uh, yeah, we're going to send the slides out. Yes, we're going to send the recording out. Chris, bring us home. Hey, first of all, Brian, Steve, Mark, and Jeremiah, thank you all. Um, thanks, everyone, for spending the time with us. We're going to continue to do things to help you build your business, help you thrive, and help generate more in, more introductions from, from Ojo to you all. So thanks for being part of what we do. We appreciate you all. Awesome. That's it. We're wrapped. You guys have an awesome Thanksgiving. We'll see you again in December. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Bye.